joined by Larry Sand, president of the California Teachers Empowerment Network. Uh, Larry, you're a former teacher yourself. Um, I know you've sometimes taken issue with some of the positions of teachers' unions over the years, um, and you've got strong views on this. So what is your reaction to what you just heard from the SEIU at that rally? Well, the, the thing that is left out of just about every conversation on this issue is what, what are these people actually being compensated? Because just the salary doesn't tell you how many hours they work, how many weeks a year they work, and more importantly, what kind of benefits they're getting, what kind of health care perks and pension benefits. For example, teachers in Los Angeles, now the average teacher, according to Transparent California, which is a wonderful website, transparentcalifornia.com, average teacher salary is $86,000, but when you blow in all that benefits, it's 114000 Food services workers make just $35,000 in salary, but when you throw in all that benefits, it becomes $69,000 a year. So I mean, people need to know this, and most people don't. And they're always complaining when not, we need to make a living wage, but there's so much that's left out of the conversation. Even so, we are in Los Angeles. It is very expensive to live here. It requires a, a significant salary. So don't they have legitimate gripes? And seeing that there is so much support this year versus 2019 at the last strike that involved the teachers. Well, the, the, the second point is where are they going to get the money? The district says it doesn't have it. I mean, if I mean, if Carvalho could just make this whole thing go away, I'm sure he would do it. Now, as we've been discussed, as was discussed before I came on, this is a three-day strike. So Friday, everybody's going to be back. I'm sure some kids will take a long weekend. But no, nothing is going to be solved by this. And I mean, it's not like you're taking a rich boss who's going to have to fork over a few, few more bucks to keep his uh, private industry employees happy. The district doesn't have the money. So, I mean, you know, what individual people are making is only part of the story. It's what they can, affo what they can afford, what the district can afford. We know the unions aren't going anywhere. Uh, what's the solution here? <laughs> well, uh, just not that you really asked. I mean, I don't know that public employees should be unionized, but that's a conversation for another day. I don't know where the district is going to get the money. I, I, you know, it's, I, I, I'm not an expert on, on school finance, but it seems to me that if Carvalho had the money to spend, he would spend it. And he just doesn't have this. And you're talking, and also the teachers union is, you know, is very involved in this because they have a contract uh, coming up, and and whatever the uh, service employees are getting, they're going to demand at least that much. They're already asking for 20 percent more. So Carvalho knows that there's a lot of money that the unions are asking be spent, and and if he doesn't have it, I don't know where he's going to get it from. Yeah, I, I, you know. Yeah, another element to this, a whole other layer is the fact that there is dwindling attendance at LAUSD. Fewer students means fewer dollars for the district. So there's that as well. Uh, Larry Sand, thank you so much with the California Teachers Empowerment Network. We appreciate your perspective. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it.